Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be a quick guide to the patch 8.3 Icecap Frost DK. As you might have seen, this build has been dominating Warcraft logs over the past few weeks, even the past few months. Uh, mostly because at this point in the expansion, people are able to itemize and perfect their gear to a point where they have high enough crit, where Icecap allows you to have essentially 100% uptime on Pillar of Frost, and that paired together with some of the other things that I will explain later makes Icecap a very strong build because it just does consistent, sustained uh, DPS. You will never burst super high, but you will also never dip super low. It's probably one of the most consistent DPS output specs in the game right now. First, let's cover itemization. For Azerite, you will want triple Icy Citadel. That is the major one that you definitely need to have. Icy Citadel is the Azerite trait that makes it so whenever your pillar runs out or is refreshed in our case, uh, you gain a buff that gives you a huge strength boost and the strength boost lasts longer based on how many crits you got during your pillar of frost. Ideally, you will have almost perfect uptime of this buff. So having three of them is a huge damage increase. For the other trait, you can either run triple Heart of Darkness on single target or if you have the level 490 shoulders, you can run one Frost Whelps along with two Heart of Darknesses. Um, and this is for pure single target. When it comes to AoE, you will want to replace all your Heart of Darknesses with Frost Whelps. As you can see, you run three Frost Whelps, three Icy Citadels. Now, the for the helmet, you can get it either from PvP that has overwhelming power or from Mythic Plus or from the vendor rather. Uh, but that one has a slightly worse secondary trait on it, but it's still pretty good. Every other piece you get for Ice Cap is from the raid, so you want to run the 490 eye level shoulders, and you want to run the Raden chest if you're running Frost Whelps, or the Vexiona chest if you're running Heart of Darkness. Next, let's talk about essences. For your major essence, you will want to run Blood of the Enemy in most situations. The only bosses where you actually are going to switch to Conflict and Strife Major to get the Chill Shriek talent are Xanash, Raden, and Nazoth. Every other boss, uh, Blood of the Enemy is just better. For your minor traits, you will want Memory of Lucid Dreams, uh, Re Breath of the Dying rank 3, and then for your third minor, you can choose either between Essence of the Focusing Iris or Conflict and Strife. I prefer Focusing Iris, but this might depend on your stats, although the difference between the two is pretty minor. Moving on to stats, my gems probably give it away, but you want to run mostly crit and then haste after that, and versatility and mastery are about equal. Um, I prefer to have a little more mastery because on AoE it's more beneficial than versatility. But as far as how much crit should you run, I recommend anywhere above 3000 crit. Uh, that's the point where the spec becomes uh, pretty fluid to play and you're getting enough crits where your Pillar of Frost is getting enough cooldown reduction on it. For haste, I do run both Vita and the Dragon Scale Trinkets uh, for raids, which means that I'm going to be getting quite a bit of haste from those. So anywhere from like 2500 to 3000 haste is um, where I find a sweet spot. Um, but if you're too low on haste, then you might want to think about changing out either some of your trinkets or some of your gear. Ideally, all of your gear will have crit and haste on it. Um, however, that's not entirely possible because some of your pieces will have other stats, like my bracers have crit mastery, for example. But as long as most of your pieces have crit haste, you're in a good spot. For corruption, it's a little bit tricky. On raid bosses, you want to go about an even split between Severe and Expedient. As you can see right here, I have uh, four rank 3 Severes and three rank 3 Expedients and a rank 2 Expedient. At this point, I could just have a 4 and 4 split. I just haven't bought them. Um, and then once our Cloak goes even higher, you'll be able to toss another either Severe or Expedient on your last piece because at this point you should have every single piece with a rank 3 on it, except for one. So, for AoE and Mythic Plus, Expedient and Haste loses a little bit of value. That is because 
in dungeons will be running the frost sight talent and i'll talk about the talent builds in a little bit but in dungeons and on aoe we run frost sight and frost sight only costs you one rune so if you have high haste you will never be able to dump your runes so you're much better going off with a higher crit build which is why you see that in mythic plus most frost dk's will run the butcher's block along with the vita charge titan shard instead of running a dragon scale and that is just because crit is more beneficial on AoE because you're less likely to run out of resources since you're just spamming one button and then sp and then spending your Howling Blast procs. Uh, but for dungeons, I tend to go a little bit higher haste build rather than a full-on crit build. It is also worth mentioning that in dungeons and in Mythic Plus, you can pick up some strike through pieces. So this has been a pretty recent development. Um, we have so much crit and we're critting so much that strike through is actually pretty decent. So in dungeons, whenever you drop those one or two expedients, you can replace those with strike throughs just to bolster your frost sight damage a little bit. Next, let's take a look at the talents. Uh, before I go into the rotation. So on single target, you will want to take Cold Heart. It's still the best talent overall. In tier 2, you will take Murderous Efficiency. Uh, this just makes it so you get more runes back. And since we have such high crit, uh, you will be getting quite a few runes back from this talent. Tier 3 doesn't matter. Tier 4, on single target, you take Frozen Pulse. Just because it's the best passive damage dealing talent currently. Tier 5 doesn't matter. In tier 6, you want to take Gathering Storm. Since we're spending so many resources and we're generating so many runes, we're able to keep up that Remorseless Winter and extend our Gathering Storm stacks quite a bit, especially during Bloodlust. So this talent is just hands down the best. And then in the last row, you take Ice Cap, which is what the entire build revolves around. Every time you crit with your Frost Strike, Obliterate, or Frost Sight, you get 3 second reduction on your Pillar of Frost. So that is why this build revolves mostly around having very high crit. Then whenever you go into an AoE fight or in the dungeon, the only thing that you will change is change Frozen Pulse to Frost Sight. Because whenever you have two or more targets, it's better to be Frost Sighting instead of pressing Obliterates. Next, let's take a quick look at the rotation. Frost DK has a fairly simple and straightforward rotation when it comes to the Ice Cap build, uh, but this build is very high APM, um, so you need to be pressing a button on every single global cooldown. You will see that you will be overwhelmed with resources, so you just need to make sure that you understand the hierarchy of abilities you're supposed to press to pump out the most damage you can. So as far as the hierarchy of your rotational abilities goes, you always want to press your Pillar of Frost as soon as it's off cooldown. After that, whenever your Remorseless Winter comes off cooldown, you should always press it. Um, and after that, it kind of depends on your resource situation. If you have a free Rhyme proc, which means that your Howling Blast will cost no runes, then you should use that as your highest priority. After that, your Obliterate should be the highest priority if you have three or more runes available. If you have less than three runes, then you should start sneaking in some Frost Strikes. But then as soon as you get some runes back and you pop above that three rune threshold, you should go back to obliterating. So with the basic rotation out of the way, I wanted to talk a little bit about cooldown usage. Basically, the only major cooldowns we have are Blood of the Enemy and Cold Heart. So the way our kit works together, we want to pop our Pillar of Frost on pull and then keep DPSing until we get our second Pillar of Frost and then as soon as we use that second one, that's when we want to dump our cooldowns. So that's where we blood of the enemy and look to use our cold heart stacks. And then from there on, you will just use your cold heart anytime you get to 20. Um, and then ideally, if you did it correctly, every other cold heart should line up with blood of the enemy. So here is how this would look on the target dummy. You would run in with pillar, remorseless winter, then you would spam out a few obliterates, then you empower rune weapon to get some runes back, keep spamming obliterates, use up howling blast procs, get some frost strikes in there, and then as soon as my pillar comes off cooldown here, I can use it, I can blood of the enemy, and I can also use my cold heart stacks. And then from there on, it's just press button every single global 
um, and make sure you're not wasting too many resources. Then my Pillar of Frost is up again, we refresh it. So as you can see, this spec plays very fast. I never have a single moment of downtime while playing this spec. So it's important that every single time you can, you are pressing a button. Um, and that is one of the big reasons why Frost DK gets so punished by any downtime. It's because our abilities don't really do much, and if we have any significant downtime on a boss, uh, we are going to be losing out on quite a bit of damage. So right there, my Pillar of Frost is up again. And as you can see, I have almost perfect uptime on Pillar of Frost. Um, I don't have food buff, didn't have bloodlust. But even outside of that, my Pillar of Frost is coming up about as soon as my previous one runs out. Pillar is up again. Um, so that's the base rotation, and then once your Blood of the Enemy is back up again, you just want to sync it together with a Cold Heart. As you can see, my Blood of the Enemy is up in about 10 seconds, and then I'll be looking at using that together with my Cold Heart. So, overall, this spec is not super difficult to play, but you do need to keep in mind what your rotational priority is, what buttons you should be pressing, and always, always, always keep in mind that any downtime will be severely punished if you're playing this spec. So you want to stick to your target like glue. Um, you need to make sure you know where the boss is moving uh, or where your tanks are moving the boss, anything like that you need to be aware of because even a few globals of downtime can mean a pretty significant loss in DPS. Okay, next let's briefly touch on the AoE rotation. Um, like I said, for AoE, you simply take Frost Sight and you will use Frost Sight whenever you have two or more targets. The AoE rotation is super straightforward. The opener goes the same way. You would go in with Pillar of Frost, Remorseless Winter, and then start spamming your Frost Sights. Um, once you've got a few Frost Sights out, you can empower Rune Weapon and then keep spamming. And then whenever your second pillar comes off, you use it, look for a Chains of Ice, then you can Blood of the Enemy and just look for a bunch of frost side spam. So after you blood of the enemy, pretty much for 10 seconds, you just want to spam frost side. Then our next pillar is up, and that's the entire AoE rotation. Spend your Howling Blast procs if you get them. Um, outside of that, just spam frost side and pillar every time it comes off cooldown. So as you can see there, I ran out of runes, so I did one frost strike. But after that, it's just straight back to spamming Frost Sights. So the AoE rotation as this spec is probably the most straightforward out of, um, out of any of the DK specs. It's really on single target where you have to worry about juggling all your resources um, that it becomes maybe a little bit more daunting for people to play. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and this was a basic introduction to the Ice Cap Frost DK. If you want any more advanced tips or tricks, you can join my Discord and ask any questions you want in there, and I'm more than happy to help you out. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.